experiment where I turned this blank white wall into a plant propagation station. This piece you're seeing down here is actually an indoor garden. We have some plants growing in this nursery right now, but as soon as they're big enough, they'll be transplanted into the rise garden, and we're growing lettuces, tomatoes, peppers, and lots of herbs. Our hope is eventually this garden will look like this. Our apartment is filled with plants. Some we've had for years and some we got more recently. But when we left the city throughout COVID, we couldn't take our plants with us and many of them died. Thankfully, upon our return, we've pretty much nursed them all back to life and they're looking really good. We have a whole variety of plants from snake plants, to succulents, to a money tree, a pancake plant, and a whole lot more. I love filling up my space with greenery, and I love taking care of plants. Watering them is one of my favorite activities, and I've loved watching them grow and change. I watched a ton of YouTube videos about how to propagate various plants in water, and basically my goal here was to create clippings and cuttings. Most people do this so that they can repot the plants in soil and actually grow another version of the same plant. And I may do that one day in the future, but I've also learned that plants can just live in water. And it's a really nice interior design idea. So my goal right now is to keep them in water. The first thing you probably want to know here is what glass tubes I used. I ordered these off of Amazon and I'll share a link for them down below in the description box. They're basically glass cylinders with a hole cut in them, so it's easy to slip over this hook and hang on the wall. They come together in a pack of four for $19.99, and I ordered 12 of them, so my order was about $60, and that includes the hooks too. But more on that later. My first step was to make the plant clippings. There's a different way to do this for each plant, so I watched a bunch of informational videos to learn. But for snake plants, you can basically just cut the leaf, so I chose one on the outside. Then I put the cutting into some fresh tap water while I cut the rest. Ultimately, I cut another snake plant leaf. Then for my jade plant, I probably cut it a bit lower than I had to just to leave a long stem. But as I've learned, you should cut it about a quarter inch beneath the node. And the node is the place where the bud, leaves, and branching twigs originate from. I'm not an expert at nodes or cutting, so I'm gonna share a link down below for more information if you're interested in learning more. I did this to a couple of my other plants, including my money tree, my pancake plant, and a couple of other succulents. And I put them all in water to sit in the meantime. I also had a few other plant clippings in here that I had taken from my mom and a friend. That's where I got the vinier ones that will ultimately hang down. Then it was time to get started, so I washed each test tube out with Castile soap and began setting up the wall. Here's a closer look at the hooks. You could just use command hooks here that stick onto the wall if you didn't want to leave any holes in the wall. But I was nervous that the command hooks wouldn't hold the weight of the test tube, and this is a nice in-between because each hook leaves four tiny holes in the wall instead of one big hole from a nail. First, I mapped out on the wall where each tube was gonna hang. I took a little bit of washi tape and put a little tape marker on each spot of the wall. At first I arranged them a bit off-center, but I decided that they looked best in even columns, so I moved the tape and even got a ruler to make sure they were equidistant. And then I started hammering in the hooks. I 
hammered so hard that my camera fell. Oops. Thankfully it was okay, so I continued shooting this video. Once all the hooks were in place, I put the glass tubes on each just to make sure they fit well and looked right. And then I took a photo of the wall with the blank tubes and I used my Instagram stories to mock up visually where I wanted to put each clipping. I knew which plants I had for these tubes, so now it was just about arranging them in a way that looked aesthetically pleasing and balanced. Afterwards, I got started by filling each test tube with a bit of water, popping the proper plant inside, picking off any low down leaves if I had to just to make sure that only the stems or bases were in the water, and then I added water to top each of them off just to make sure each plant was touching the water. So ultimately, the amount of water in each cylinder was related to how long each stem was. And then I went ahead and put them on the wall in my mapped out arrangement. My plan is to move them around and rearrange every so often if I want to try something new. But for now, I really liked this arrangement and it was a very easy way to create a beautiful DIY plant propagation wall in my New York City apartment. It really brings a lot of fun to this space and it looks playful but also minimal and simple. And once I have the greenery from the garden growing beneath it, this entire wall will transform from a blank white space into a living green wall. This was just an experiment for me so I will keep you updated on how they do. I'm assuming some of these clippings might not make it and that's okay. But stay tuned in a future video and follow me on Instagram at LucyBFink to see updates. I hope you liked this video. Let me know down in the comments if you're currently propagating any of your own plants or if you plan to do something like this in the future. And let me know if you have any questions. Sending so much love from New York City and I'll see you next time.